Somerset produced another clinical Vitality Blast performance, thrashing Essex by 10 wickets with 54 balls to spare to put one foot firmly into the knockout stages. Essex batted after winning the toss and Varun Chopra was soon tucking into Jerome Taylor, the first six of the match, coming off the game's ninth delivery. But that was about as good as it got for the visitors. Jamie Overton's opening over cost only one run and included the wicket of Adam Wheater, who was held by Johan Myberg to start a day he will remember for a very long time. 31 runs were taken off the first four overs as the Eagles started well enough, Chopra dominating the early scoring. But he had no support. Overton saw to that by bowling Paul Walter for a single to give the bowler figures of two for six at this stage. The total read 48 for two by the end of the six overs of power play and then 77 for two at the halfway stage. Although for the most part, Essex were finding boundaries like this one for Ryan Tendiscarta hard to come by. Ted Descartes had made 26 when he was removed by roll of Van der Merwe, the batsman picking out James Hildreth. Then came the wicket which really set Essex back as Tom Abel ran out Chopra for 43 as he tried to get back on strike. Just when the Eagles needed to soar, the runs dried up with only one boundary in seven overs. Ravi Vapara then gave Overton his third wicket as he finished with the fine figures of three for 23. Essex needed a strong finish but instead lost a host of wickets at the end. Simon Harmer hauled out to Max Waller off Lewis Gregory and then Taylor grabbed three more in the last over. Michael Kyle Pepper had struggled for his 27 runs before picking out Abel. Peter Siddle was out for a golden duck as Waller cleaned up in the outfield. And Matt Coles left it all to Taylor to finish things off. The Jamaican impressing once again with the ball for figures of 3 for 28. Essex hitting only 11 fours and 1 six in their horribly below par score of 135 for 9. And just how short that was was soon put into perspective by Myberg and Tom Banton. The first three overs brought only 23 runs, but then Myberg exploded into action off Adam Zampa with three fours in four balls and this six. He then smashed Coles for three successive boundaries in the next over, the fifth. Having scored just eight runs from his first eight deliveries, the opener had now raced to 40 from 19. The last over of the power play saw Myberg hit his straps even more. Siddle couldn't stop the charge as three more fours came off his first three balls of his second over. The third of which took Myberg to his rapid half century of just 22 deliveries. After six overs, the total read 77 without loss and the game was already over. It now simply became about just how much Somerset could embarrass their visitors. To the next ball, Myberg smacked Siddle into the distance. The South African had never played better in his county's colours. With the 50 in the bag, Myberg did briefly calm down but still found the boundary with ease when he was given the chance. He soon had more boundaries to his name than the entire Essex innings. His third maximum saw him pass his previous best T20 score of 88. Thanks to his brilliance, incredibly, the target from the last 10 overs was just 11 runs. An enormous roar greeted Myberg's maiden T20 hundred. What an innings it was after that watchful start. His 16th four to go with three sixes saw him raising his bat after facing only 42 deliveries. It was an innings to be remembered by all who watched it. He hit only one white ball hundred before in his entire career in 187 knocks. And the last ball of the 11th over amazingly saw Somerset over the line. Banton got the single, he having the best view of Myberg's magnificence. Banton only needing to make 29 in the end, his partner ending on 103 from 44 balls. It was as one-sided a T20 game as you're ever likely to see. Somerset winning by 10 wickets with a full nine overs unused. It gives them 12 points from nine games and they are almost assured of getting to the knockout stages ahead of their next game at Sussex on Sunday.